Hi guys, hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, our main focus will going to be to learn about CSS3 filter functions for the images. So there are many filter functions that range from blur to brightness to contrast to drop shadow to grayscale, hue rotate, inward. Then we looked into opacity in our last tutorial. Uh, then we have saturate, sepia, so multiple kind of different things that you could do right within your images. So we're going to try one by one. So we're going to leave picture one in the original form and in the picture two we're going to start applying the filter. So the filter, let's say if I apply a sepia filter, which can have a value between 0 and 1. So I will apply a value of 0 0.8. Now as I refresh my output, check out this image versus the image to your left. Now let me drop the value from 0 0.8 to 0 0.3 as I save the image and refresh. You can see that it has less sepia effect. They're not exactly the same, but it has less of the effect. It still reflects some colors. So that's the sepia effect. Now we can change uh, it to a saturate effect. And I'm also going to explain to you how the saturate effect actually works. So in the saturate effect, you adjust the color saturation uh, somewhere between the values of 0 to 1. Uh, decrease the saturation, and values greater than 1 increase the saturation. So between 0 and 1, you decrease the saturation, and over 1, you increase the saturation. So if I give a value, let's say 0 0.7, so now as I refresh, so this is my saturation. Slightly different. You can see a slight difference between the two. Now let me make this one 3.7. You can see there's so much saturations and colors. So you can, you can change the saturation through the saturate filter. Similarly, uh, you can use grayscale, and grayscale can also have a value between 0 and 1, 0 leaving the image unchanged up to 1, which adds a grayscale effect. So let me change this to grayscale with a value of 0 0.6, somewhere right in the middle. Okay, So you can see this has some colors and some grayscale. Gray now let me increase this to 0 0.9. And you can see that it's far more grayscale, but you can still see this red still has some tone to it. But if I change it to 1, now it's completely grayscale. So that's how, this is a beautiful feature to have some gray and some colors. Extremely awesome feature, which is called a grayscale filter. Similarly, uh, you can also control the blur. So you can make your images blur, or and, and you can control how much blur you want your image to be. So when, as far as the blur is concerned, you can you, it applies a blur to the images where the length defines the size of the blur in the pixels. So if I give a smaller length, let's say if I want my length to be 1 pixels, so as you can see, the image is slightly blur. Now let me drop it to 0.3 pixels. Now the image is not blur at all. Okay, it's, it's not very blurry. Now if I change this to 3 pixels, you can see it's very blurry. Compared to 1 pixel, which is slightly blurry. So this number can be used to change the blurriness on the picture. Very similarly, you can use Hue Rotate. So what Hue Rotate does, it, has, it, it gives a circular wheel. So it, it gives you a wheel of colors between 0 and 360. So the value of 0 degrees on a value of 360 degrees, they leave the hue unchanged. Any value in between will have an effect of hue, like 180 degrees displays the complementary colors. So for example, just to test it out, I'm going to use over here hue rotate. I'm going to use 180 degrees. Okay, so this is the hue rotation, 180 degrees. Now let me change this to 60. Okay, so you can see um, that it can have a different impact on the pictures in terms of its hue on the hue wheel. Uh, similarly, you can also apply the inward effect. The inward also if you have a value of 0, it leaves the image unchanged and up to a value of 1, which completely inverts the colors. So you have a range of inward, let's say, 0.7. And you can see it pretty much looks like an x-ray. Uh, if I change it to a value of 
you can see it's much closer to the actual image and a 1 is a complete inward versus 0.7 okay slight difference between 1 and 0.7 so these are some of the filters you also have other filters like you can control the brightness um, you can also con uh, control the contrast uh, brightness and contrast they both have a value of 0 to 1 for adjusting the brightness in the decreasing end or the contrast in the decreasing amount and but if you want the, the increasing brightness or the increasing contrast then try with values greater than one so these are some of the things that you can do with images awesome stuff great stuff and this, these are not the only things that you can do with images now there are certain other things that you can do with the images like which we call image transformations and you can you can use image transformation functions to transform the images, you can translate the images, you can rotate the images and axis, you can scale the images, you can change their perspective, you can skew the images, you can do all sorts of stuff with the images. It's unbelievable how much CSS3 has come along, uh, which will going to improve the look and feel of your stuff. And you, for, for the most part, you do not need an image editing tool. CSS3 can do it all for you. So anyway, in a different tutorial, we're going to then work with the 3D transformations and also the translate functions for the images so that you can also see the CSS3 uh, 2D transformation function and CSS3 3D transformation function. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at those things. Till then, 